All right, so I'm going to show you how to make a next-gen AAA game-ready wooden crate. And we're going to make it in a very realistic, dirty, medieval style. We're going to have a lot of nice imperfections in the boards, a lot of dirt. And we're going to make it out of individual 3D objects. Which should give it a completely realistic look and it'll also mean we could say take the top off fill it with stuff break it apart do whatever and it should look completely real and we're gonna model it here in blender gonna get something kind of like this then Texture it here inside Substance Painter, and then export it out into Unreal Engine. We're going to make sure we get several LOD levels set up, and that will pretty much be it, actually. Yeah. So let's get started. Alright, so. We're going to start here in a blank scene, and I'm going to add in a cube. Move that up one, and this is just going to be kind of the reference for the shape of the crate. Then I'm going to duplicate that and move it out along the Y. And I'm going to change it to 0.1 meters by... 0.2 meters. Then I'm going to rotate it on the Z and the Y by 90 degrees each. And now we're going to go ahead and add some UV seams here. So we're going to want to cut it along the back. And each of the corners. And there'll be apparent why once we get it cut. So mark those seams and unwrap. <laughs> no. All right. So first, we need to go into object mode and apply our scale. All right, so now, now it should work as expected. You see we end up with the back of the plank here, and then the front and the sides all on one island. And we want to do it like that just because we don't care so much about the back of the planks. I mean, you should only really see those if you are like looking into the inside of the crate. But what we do want is we want the wood grain texture to tile seamlessly over the edges here on the front. That will give us a nice realistic look. So once we got that, we're going to add a bevel modifier. And we're going to change the limit method to weight. And then we're going to increase the bevel weight to something small like 0.03. Mm. Up the segments to two. That'll just give us these nice rounded edges here. Hmm. And then, going to add some loop cuts. About six. Yeah, six. And those will give us vertices so we can actually deform the board so it's not this completely straight and perfect flawless piece of wood. Alright, so let's turn on 
snapping here. Make sure it's set to snap to vertex. And let's start snapping it to the cube. All right. Now that's on the cube, let's go ahead and go into edit mode and start deforming this board already. And to do that, I'm just going to grab each and every vertex. I'm going to move it slightly. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to turn off snapping so that doesn't happen real quick. All right. And this might seem a bit a bit tedious right now, but we're doing this this way and not like applying a deform modifier with some noise texture attached to it just because that really won't give us a very good result. I already tried that. And I got okay results with a cloud texture, but it just really wasn't what I was after. And it's not that bad to just grab a handful of vertices and move them about like this. This should give us a pretty nice realistic look to our plank. Yep. All right. So now we've got this. Now I want to duplicate this. Now I'm going to turn snapping back on. Yeah, just snap it along the Z up to here. Then I'm going to select both the planks. Control D or Shift D to duplicate again. Rotate on the Y, 90 degrees. And now we're going to make these shorter. And I'm going to make these 1.6 meters long, since both the other planks are 0.2 meters wide. And we're using this 2 meter cube as reference. So now we got a simple square frame. And I'm going to take this bottom plank here. I'm going to move it to 1 on the Z. Then rotate it 45 degrees on the Y. Hmm. Alright, so let's see if I can... If I scale this... Uh, on the z-axis. That should... And I want to fit right up against the edges of those planks there on the top and bottom. Once we got it about there, go back into edit mode. Gonna add a center loop cut. Then we're going to scale We'll scale it by the local z-axis. So just change that from global to local. And scale it along the z until we fit that in there too. So you see now we've got this nice cross support here. And all that's left now is we need the planks. 
So, and the planks I'm talking about, I mean the planks that go here. So I'm going to go ahead and I want them to kind of fit in this frame. So I want to make this here about half as wide. So that should be, let's just check, yep, that is the X. So I'm going to divide that by two. All right, there we go. And now I'm going to grab it on, yeah, not the local, global. So I'm going to grab on the local said that wrong again grab on the global Y snap it to the edge there because I want this on the front then I'm gonna take this plank duplicate it grab it move it out here on the X so we can see it now we want this one to be half as thick as well so, divide that by two. And, yeah, let's move that back. And I get that to snap. All right. So that's snapped in there now. And, X snapped it there. All right. So now we're just going to duplicate this a whole bunch of times. Move it out on the X, Control D, lock it to the X axis, move it out. I'm going to select three of these actually, move them out, select these two, and move them out there. All right, and that is the basics of our wooden frame. And we're basically going to take this and we're going to duplicate it and we're going to cover this cube, essentially. But before we do that, I kind of want to add some more individuality to each of these planks because right now they are all pretty much the same. So we want to go into each plank and take a few of the vertices and deform them so they're a bit different. So I'll just start here. And I'm going to grab this one. Probably turn off snapping for this. That'll help. There we go. And I'm just trying to make this look a bit different from the others. It's already been deformed. We just don't want it to match, obviously. It'd be weird if every plank had the exact same deformations to it. All the same imperfections. All right, so I'm not going to do that for all of these right here because they'll take way too long. So I'll do the rest of that at a later time. For now, I'm going to create a new collection here. I'm going to call this uh, frame 01. I'm going to move all the pieces of this frame on it. So everything but our default cube. 
And what that's going to do is they'll let us very easily, we can come in here and duplicate the collection. And then I believe you can select all, yeah, you can select all the objects. And see, so that's going to let us very easily create duplicates of this frame panel, move it around without turning it all into one game object, which we don't want to do just yet, since once we pull this into Substance Painter, it's going to basically separate our mesh out by game objects, so when it does all the map baking, it, there won't be any bleeding on the textures. But I think this is a good place to end for now. So we're going to wrap this up, or more likely we're just going to continue in the next part of the lesson. All right.